What's going on everyone? In this video today, I'm going to be showing you all how to install Windows 11 ARM in UTM for Mac OS X. And you're going to need three things for this video today. The first of those is a copy of UTM for Mac. The second, a copy of a Windows 11 ARM file. And the third, Spice Guest Tools, which are basically the Windows 11 drivers, which allows it to run properly on the UTM application. And we can go ahead and download all three of those files now. We're starting off with UTM. This will be the first link down below. Click that and then I'll bring you to a GitHub page that looks something like this. Scroll down on that GitHub page and look for the assets section. And under that, just click on the utm.dmg file. And then save it to somewhere easy to access. Next, click on the second link, which will be Windows for ARM. And that'll bring you to a page like this. And on this page here, you're basically going to need a Microsoft account. And you're going to need to be a part of the Windows Insider program. And don't worry, the Windows Insider program is free. So first up, you're going to want to click Learn More. Then go ahead and sign in with your Microsoft account. And if you've successfully signed in, you should now see your email on the top right of Microsoft's page. Go ahead and scroll down and locate the Meet Windows Insider Program section. And under that, press Register. Then scroll down and accept the terms and press Register Now. And then press Flight. And on this flight page here, just scroll down and look for the Download a Windows Insider Preview ISO link and press that. And you should now have access to the Windows Insider Preview ARM file. And over in the right sidebar, just locate the Windows 11 on ARM Insider Preview link and press that. And then go ahead and press the big blue button, that, which should say Windows Client ARM64 Insider Preview and then a certain build number and just press that. And I'll now go ahead and download. And this file will be like 9 to 10 gigs, so this will take a little bit of time. But while we wait for that to download, we can go ahead and download the last file, which is the Spice Guest Tools or the drivers for Windows 11 on UTM. And this will be the third download link in the description. And I'll redirect you to a page like this. And just locate the Spice Guest Tools and QEMU drivers windows and then press the download link below that. And once you've successfully downloaded all three of these files, we can now move on to the conversion process. And that conversion process involves converting the .vhdx file over to a .qcap2 file. And the reason why we're converting these files is because vhdx files don't seem to get along very nice with UTM, and they commonly cause system corruption, meaning that your whole Windows installation will just become like invalid and won't even boot. So I recommend going through this conversion process just to avoid that hassle. And in order to convert the vhdx file over to a qcap2 file, you're just going to need a tool called Homebrew. And this will be the fourth link in the description. And clicking that link there will redirect you to a page like this. And what you're going to want to do on this page here is look for the install Homebrew section, and then you're going to want to copy the command here that we're going to be pasting in the terminal by clicking this clipboard. Then go ahead and open up terminal which can be done by either command space to open up Spotlight, you can locate it in your Applications folder, or you can go into Launchpad and locate it. And in Terminal, you're just going to want to copy this, and then you're going to want to Command-V that into Terminal, and then press Enter. Then it's going to ask for your login password so that it can fully install itself on your laptop. Once you've typed it in, just press Enter, and press Enter once again to continue the installation. And now you're going to want to add homebrew to your path, which can be done by copying this echo command all the way down to the end of the quote marks. Command C, Command V, Enter. And homebrew is now a part of your path. Next up, we're going to want to install QEMU, which is basically the program that will allow us to convert these files. And to do that, just type brew, install, QEMU, and then press Enter. And since I've already installed this before, it's going to say it's already installed, but for you, it's going to take like 5 or 10 minutes. And once it's completed, you'll see this percent mark with the typing symbol after it. And now that we've installed both of those tools, we have the ability to convert the bhdx file over to qcow2. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type qemu-img space 
convert dash p dash o qcow2 and then space. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click and drag the .vhdx file from finder in the terminal. And then after the .vhdx put a space and then once again click and drag that from finder into terminal. But this time you're going to want to delete the .vhdx at the end of it and replace it with qcow2. And now what we're doing is we're telling it to convert the vhdx file over to qcow2 and save it in the same place. So now you can just press enter. And it's going to go ahead and convert that file over for you. All right, and now that we've successfully converted the VHDX file over to QCAD2, we can now continue with the rest of the installation. So you can go ahead and close out a terminal and whatever other windows you have open. And now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to locate the utm.dmg and double click that to open it. And then click and drag utm in your applications folder. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and eject the UTM disk from your desktop. So you can just click and drag it to your trash. And you can also delete the .dmg file if you'd like. Now, go ahead and open up UTM. And since it's in your applications folder now, you can just open up Spotlight. Or you can go locate it if you'd like. And once you're in UTM, you can go ahead and click on Create a New Virtual Machine. Go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call it Windows 11. And then select the style as operating system, and then you can choose an icon if you'd like. Next, to go over to the system tab, select the architecture as ARM64, and then select the system as QEMU 5.2. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to figure out how much RAM your Mac has in total. So if your Mac has like 16 gigs of RAM, go ahead and give the virtual machine about 8 gigs. If your Mac has 8 gigabytes of RAM, go ahead and give the virtual machine about 4 gigs. You basically just want to give the virtual machine about half of your total system memory. Now click show advanced settings. And for some reason this Cortex A72 virtual CPU doesn't always work very well with this um, Windows 11 installation. So I would recommend just clicking on that and then just click the default. And I'm not exactly sure what the default CPU is under here. But um, this one seems to work just fine with me. Now go over to the drives tab and then select import drive and then locate the .qcow2 drive and then press open and then select the interface as NVMe. Now click new drive, removable and then make sure you have USB selected. And now just click on save. And you can now go ahead and try to boot up your Windows 11 virtual machine. So just press the big play button and for some of you, you might see this error here saying this version of Mac OS does not support GPU acceleration. Don't worry, you won't have to update your Mac. Oh, and also, if you don't see this error, that's a good thing. It just means your Mac's up to date. But if you'd rather not update your Mac and you just want to get around this here, just press OK and then open up the settings again. Go over to display. And then where you see emulated display card, instead of having the one that says GPU supported after it, just select the one right above it, which would be Virtuo RAM FB, and then just press save. And now you can use the Windows 11 virtual machine without GPU acceleration. So you won't have to update your Mac, basically. And after some time, you'll be booted into the Windows 11 installation steps here. Go ahead and set this up as you'd like. And then it's going to say, let's connect you to a network. But since we haven't installed the Spice Guest Tools drivers yet, we're not going to be able to do that. So for now, just press I don't have internet. And then just continue with the limited setup because we also don't have most of the drivers. Then accept the terms. Then go ahead and give your computer a name. And then select your desired privacy settings.
and we've now booted into Windows 11, so we can do the last part of this tutorial here, which is installing the Spice Guest Tools drivers. So all we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to mount the ISO file that we downloaded earlier in UTM settings. So we can go ahead and shut down the virtual machine. Then go ahead and locate the Windows 11 virtual machine in the sidebar. Go down to CD, DVD, and then press Browse. And then select the Spice Guest Tools ISO file. And we'll now be able to access this in our virtual machine. So once again, go ahead and start up the virtual machine. And if your cursor isn't appearing inside the virtual machine, all you have to do is press on this like um, capture your mouse cursor button up here. And then now you should be able to control the virtual machine. And to locate the Spice Guest Tools, just open up the File Explorer, locate the CD drive, and then double click on the Spice Guest Tools ISO application. And then it's going to ask for administrator permissions. Just press yes. Press next. I agree. And I'll go ahead and install all the drivers for you, including Wi Fi drivers and display drivers. And just like that, we are now going to be able to connect to the internet and fix the display resolution. And the first thing I would recommend doing now is fixing the display resolution. Go ahead and right click on the desktop. Go to display settings. And then select show only on one. Then select keep changes. Now scroll down and then select the display resolution. I'm going to select the highest one supported on my Mac and then press keep changes. And then you're going to want to go ahead and put the virtual machine in a full screen. And if it's zoomed in like this, just go ahead and swipe to the right with three fingers and then swipe back. And you'll see that the scaling has been fixed. And then if you'd like to enlarge the taskbar or the font, just go ahead and change the scale from 100% to say like 150. And now you can see it's much easier to see. And lastly, I'll just go ahead and show you that the internet is working fine. So just type in google.com. And as you guys can see, we have now successfully installed Windows 11 ARM on UTM for Mac. And the very last thing I would recommend doing is ejecting the Spice Guest tools from the CD drive in UTM. And to do that, just go ahead and shut down your virtual machine. Then go back to UTM, look for the CD DVD drive, and then press clear. And your Windows 11 virtual machine is all set and ready to go. And a few final remarks I have are that if you haven't updated your Mac recently and your Mac does not support GPU acceleration, you'll notice quite a bit of lagging in the video. Like as you can see here, just opening up an application has a bunch of like scan lines and it just doesn't look very nice. But like I said, that's only because it doesn't have 3D acceleration. So if you want to use UTM and, you, and you're considering updating your Mac, I would recommend it because I will fix these issues here. And another thing I should um, mention is that in order to remove your mouse from the VM, you just do control and option. And now you can leave the VM. And say you can access like the menu bar up here. And if you want to put it back into the virtual machine, just do control and option again. And you now have control of the virtual machine. And yeah, that's how you install Windows 11 on UTM. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you had any trouble at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. And like I said earlier, all these links will be down in the description below.